We're glad to have you back with us. We continue with our big stories, and this time we're going on to the labor front. So what do we have for you? Well, uh, two things, basically. One has to do with uh, the bit about neutrality allowance for Clocksad. Uh, there's been some agreement, so to speak, but it, it is awaiting, well, negotiations and what will emanate uh, from the decisions to be arrived at. There's also the bit about whether we can justifiably peg the inflationary weight with public sector wages. Is it a possibility? Joining us, Ofosua Samwe is Executive Secretary, National Labour Commission. Mr. Samwe, very good morning to you, sir. Well, that tone, never a good sign. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll just start mm. with the conversation in the studio. Definitely. Two crucial matters when yes. it comes to labor. Yes. And these are no matters to play with because they can come back to bite hard. We saw what happened with UTAG at the start of the year and now Clogsack. Yeah. Well, I'm told we still have uh, Mr. Fusuamua Asamoah on the line. Uh, thank you for joining the program, sir. Thank you. Mm. Let's start off with the uh, requests, if I may put it, from uh, some labor unions that the increase in their salaries should match the inflation rates as we speak currently. Is that feasible? Well, unfortunately, I'm not part of the tripartite negotiating uh, committee, but uh, mm. I doubt very much from what I think. I doubt very much. 20% uh, is quite substantial. Uh, okay. That would be difficult for government to do, especially when the government is trying to cut down on how much it spends to the extent that all government appointees have their salaries cut by. 30%, you have and other allowances by 50%. I think uh, that would be difficult for the government. But it will depend on how best we are able to negotiate. Mm. Okay, so it's interesting you say that, uh, that it will depend on how best they are able to negotiate. I agree with you on that, but yes, you say you, say, you, say you see... Yes, if they can justify it. But you say from what you see, it would be difficult. difficult. What do you see, first of all, and, and if I may add, do you also see the things they are pointing at? They are talking about the fact that inflation means that whatever else they do in our economy, whether it is food they are purchasing, whether it is uh, whatever they are using, the components for their work, whether it is transporting themselves to work with fuel, everything else is going up. We have the latest rate, which even moves above what they were looking at when they were making their first claim at 20%. It is now 23.6%. So... Do you see that as well? And how do you think it could factor into engagements? Uh, yes, I heard of the 23.6%, but um, others have counted that you don't believe it. I just said it this morning. And like I'm saying, if the government is in the position to pay, fine. Unless they will have to make sacrifices. I'm not sure that uh, because inflation is 26%, or fuel has gone up by 26%, everything in the country has gone up by 26%. Water hasn't gone up that. Electricity hasn't gone up that. And no, not all food items have gone up that. So I think uh, we should be a little bit uh, considerate of the government's position for now. So the government mm. is doing a lot. Mm. Oh, I saw that. Mr. 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 Samoa, <laughs> okay, so. I, I, I find it a bit interesting. Let, let, let me just bring this in. You say that some people don't even believe it is up to 23.6%. Well, this is coming from the Ghana Statistical Service. So I don't know where else they would be getting their data from. But, but when it comes to your saying that uh, not everything has gone up, here's the interesting part. In the basket of, of things that the Ghana Statistical Service uses, there are 307 components out of the 307, 295, call that 90, what, 6, 7% plus, has gone up. Uh, transport has gone up, the, the most recent one, by 20%. Uh, food prices have gone up month on month. In fact, now we are looking at 26.6%, which is part of what led to the increment in the overall inflationary rate of 23.6%. So... I struggle a bit to get it when you say not everything has gone up. Practically everything has. Anyway, for now, my current position, I'm a civil servant, you know. So if they are successful, I also benefit. So I wish them well that they are able to 
use the statistics or know the figures they are going to to justify the increment mm. they want. Because mm. uh, I don't want to poke my nose too much. So if they are successful, I want to be a beneficiary of the 20%. But I doubt mm. that government can be that cost. Uh, Mr. Samoa, in, in your earlier submission, you mentioned that um, uh, the, these labor unions that are making these demands of government should appreciate or understand the circumstances government finds itself in. Do yeah. I get the indication that um, you perceive them to be overbearing? Oh, no. I wouldn't want to use that word. And that's why I said a bit considerate. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That's a bit considerate. Because it's all over. Sometimes we talk about this COVID. Recently, the Russian-Ukraine war. People think Ukraine is far away. But we get heat from there. And we import things from Europe. They have, uh, what do you call it? Germany and so on. They also rely on gas from Russia. So if they have their gas cut or they have their increments and so on, definitely it's affecting the global economy. Mm. We can't run away from it. We can't run away from it. Recently, uh, the root tools have been abolished. And we saw about 800 people who have been added jobless. The government must find a place for them because we said that we are going to reassign them. And we need money, government needs money to do that. The free SHS, during our time, you will opt to go to a secondary school, and that is when you write the common entrance. And then you pick a form and choose your schools. But now, because the SHS is free, people who ordinarily will not have gone to the secondary school, everybody is going to the secondary school now. Free food, free days, I mean, seriously. 111 hospitals under construction, roads, and like I <laughs> and we all enjoy it. We will all enjoy it, whether you are a civil servant, whether you are a public servant, whether you are in the military, everywhere. Mm -hmm. In recent times, when you look at even the security situation, you have to look at what, look at what is happening in the Burkina Faso. It started from Niger, Mali, it's getting close here. And we have to, and when you you engage the soldier. It's not like me and you that you just see it as a lion. From their boots, their gun to their head is catered for. And especially when you are going to put them in the boots on red alert. You see, so all these are, mm. uh, what do you call it, occasions or cases that may not have been anticipated, right? But now that it has happened, there should be some funds to take care of it. Right. Uh, so just to uh, chip in this bit when it comes to the neutrality allowance, do we have it that it's been stepped down? Because we know that as of May the 11th, that issue had been addressed. So what, what is the status of that? Ha has it been resolved? It's been resolved. Right. Uh, we, we, we know there are further engagements with Clocks Act to give them, uh, you know, some of what they want. And I know I'm chipping in the other side of the conversation, but uh, bringing in this neutrality allowance bit, is, is, is that to say that as far as Clocks Act is concerned, payments have been made, everything is settled, moving on, we're not going to have any issues with, with this uh, specific allowance? Well, they have issued a letter that they are satisfied with their engagement with government and that they are calling off the strike. So I think that is enough. Mm. All right, it may uh, have been paid, it may not have been paid, but enough arrangements have been put in place for future payments. Mm. So, so what, what, what arrangements are those? No, I'm saying it may have been, or may not. But I know that if it has not, then it means enough arrangements have been made with government for future settlement. Talking about allowances, uh, in today's edition of the Republic Press on page four, nurses are also saying they deserve emotional allowance. Um, is it because, <laughs> is it because somebody is getting a neutral? Um, so I, that, that, now, that's, that, now that comes to my, my question. So once government has heeded to this request by Clock Sag and going ahead to effect payment, as at 11th of May 2022, uh, don't you think this is going to open the floodgates for some of these uh, other 
worker groups and unions to also push for what they deserve because the nurses explain that they actually go through a lot of emotional stress is this something uh, that in you doing their work or because somebody has got something they must necessarily get something well mr Asama, we yes, do yes. not speak for them yes. but Let but they ask. are saying that they need Let's this, ask this as the money to um, host or produce it of joy FM, eh, and the other species which begins at six at what time do you leave home? About 3 a.m. How much risk allowance is given to you? So if we don't take uh, emotional allowance here, risk allowance here, I mean, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> there, 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 are, there, are, there, are, there are those who pushed against this neutrality allowance, saying that it was going to cause you know, problems like this. And first off, let me just say, we don't even know if um, the, the Midwives Association is doing this just because Clocksack had its neutrality allowance approved. But there are those who say that once you, you, you do this for Clocksack, then there are those who've had issues, even in the past, who also begin to push for what they want that they feel is justified. I think uh, we have to look at the whole salary and week system again. Mm. Because if they, sometimes somebody may work in the civil service, at our place, people are taking home 702 cities, 720. Which nurse will take this? Which teacher will take this? So the salaries are not the same, depending on where you work. Even we appointees that they call as chief executives, executive secretaries, and so on. Somebody's um, salary, right, is just necessary to or have the, that of another CPA. <laughs> so we have to look at the whole thing politically and not, I mean, in piecemeal, emotional allowance here, neutrality allowance here, risk allowance here, clothing allowance here, and so on. And you see, it is a name neutrality allowance, which is confusing people. But if we have to go into it, the what went on before that allowance was granted, I'm sure it's a name that has not helped. Right. The, the, the name may be creating confusion, but the government side it agreed on the name. So whatever the technicalities are, we do know that it, it, it's not necessarily on the back of neutrality. But once you couch it as such, people will put it in that light. But, but let me ask you, Mr. Samoa. So... Uh, when it comes to the emotional uh, uh, allowance. Uh, allowance that these registered nurses and midwives are asking for, are you saying it is not justifiable? Is that is what you're saying? Those, is it for those who will be in the trauma center or any registered nurse who will go and get uh, this uh, emotional allowance? Because if you, if you, you after completing a you enter a matrix school, right? You know you are going to be a midwife. Take care of the midwife. And they are not always in the maternity. They do public education. They do antenatal and postnatal care. How many times are they doing the delivery? It could be for one, two years. A midwife may not have entered taking delivery, but he's doing other things. Postnatal care or antenatal care. What is the emotion attached? So, so in other words, all it is all it all is what they are expected to do. Uh, Mr. Samuel, in other words, it is what they are expected to do, so there's no justification for this. Is that what you're saying? I don't think there's no justification. But what I'm saying that in the our present state in this we are a little considered with our demand. When did this emotional allowance of this midwife and nurses come? If we are talking about those in the accident and trauma center, well, some of the accidents when they bring the death. If you are there within three months, you should be doing something for the emotion and the things you are exposed to. What are then the mortuary will also come. When all of us were running away from COVID, doctors get to the COVID world with every part of their body covered. When the people die, where, where do they take them? Is it not the mortuary attendants who sometimes work with their bare hands? Which of them should be traumatized? or be emotionally compensated. Mm, but, but have you considered and the patient-to-nurse the ratio in the country? They are also talking are about stress. Away. And when it happens, it's delivered to the poor man. 
Then they will also come for something again. And it will be round, 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 and the whole system will collapse. So let's be a bit considered. This is where we find ourselves. So finally, finally, the Mr. Samoa. in crisis. What can we do to help? Mr. Samoa, finally. Yeah. So I, I get your point on the unending request from work groups and labor unions. Also on the same page of the Republic Press, page four, the senior staff of some universities in the country are threatening to embark on another strike to demand payment of certain allowances. So you earlier spoke about restructuring our salary uh, portfolio so that we can deal with some of these things. Because every now and then you hear issues of allowances. Yeah. How, how do we handle this so that you know, every group is satisfied and we know that maybe at least you have to hold on for five or six years before if there's a need for another allowance, uh, it will be considered. I think that is in the domain of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Mm. They can speak to that better. Because, uh, you know, as a commission, we, we are like a quasi judicial body, and uh, when there's disagreement, we come into step mm. So I don't want to get into a debate with this. So. No, I'm just asking you to give us your suggestions on how we can remedy what you call a problem. Yeah, like, so the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission to be empowered enough to, I mean, look at this whole salary structure again and allow us seriously. Mm. Mr. Samoa, uh, we'll be moving on, but the very final bit to you, you said something interesting that I just want you to briefly take a look at. You said, and I quote, we're in a crisis. What can we do to help, help government, so to speak? But how about we reflect on the other side? People are also bleeding, so to speak, suffering mm -hmm. from all the things that we're going through through. Um, how can government also help them? And that is it's where these of, allowances all, and all are coming in. Of, it's all part of the crisis. There are people who are bleeding. So those who have extra blood are donating to the blood bank. That is why people are giving up 30% of their salary, 60% of their other allowances. So that that will go into, I mean, donating blood to those who are bleeding. And when you need the blood, Sometimes you get the blood infused into your business street. Sometimes you are giving hemoglobin and uh, other blood tonics to bring you on. So depending on, let's look at all that. We are in case That is what I can say. We, we appreciate your time and contribution. <laughs> for Samoa as Executive Secretary of the National Labor Commission. As Benjamin, very interesting analogy he cites there right. in wrapping up the conversation. But uh, that will be it for labor-related issues. When we cap back, we'll be having a conversation on the introduction of a new concept and program uh, by Joy Learning. You want to stay with us.